didn't affect a lot of people because most people use LTS release. Yeah, most for anyone Linux who users. doesn't know it, so uh, the XZ issue was it had been in the package for about two months, but yep. none of those packages were shipping on stable releases. So um, it was very, very close to shipping on Fedora 40. If it had lasted a couple yep. more weeks, it would have been on Fedora 40. Um, and it could have been on Ubuntu 24.04 as well if it lasted a bit longer. But yeah, it got caught. So it was only on your rolling releases like Arch, Gen 2, uh, Void had it. And on your unstable like developer releases like Rawhide, Sid, yeah. uh, things like that. Come on, I just watched yes. a video last uh, last night that put me to sleep. But uh, it was a very very in depth video where they they went through the infograph you showed in yours, mm. uh, and they talked about and the guy replicated the issue in a VM. He showed us the script running, the back door running. In a VM, the sandbox environment, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was really interesting. It injects, it takes, uh, uh, it takes his key and injects it on top of uh, yours and makes it look like a valid key for the user, for the uh, developer to gain access to your system. And that's, and we need to put an asterisk here. It affected distributions that linked. SSHD to lib, uh, lib LZMA. We, yeah, it, because of a um, it, because of a custom patch made in OpenSSH. Yeah. Yeah. That was the issue. It was specifically a custom patch, which I believe I know um, Debian not yeah, Debian ships it Red Hat ships it. I think Sousa also ships it. Um, yeah, Sousa it was a fairly common it. patch, but Arch doesn't ship it because yeah. for the most part, Arch... There's some cases where it's not like this, but for the most part, Arch ships whatever upstream gives. So in this case, yeah. they don't do it, so not a problem. And, the, uh, and, and that affected distros that built via the tarball, not source, directly from source. Yeah, well, the, it, I still... I wouldn't recommend running the source. I don't particularly like the approach that Arch has taken for dealing with the issue. Um, because most other distros like Debian, like Gen2, they rolled back to an old version. Whereas oh, Arch yeah. decided to build off of the source, but stayed within the ish like the zone of issues. It's just source doesn't have the activation uh, the activation command. So it's probably fine. But I, I don't think it's the best approach. I think what the other distros did was better. The issue with Arch going back is if they did that, and Gen2 has this issue right now, where Gen2 rolled back even further. So yeah. Gen2 users now have to basically rebuild the entire system. And the Arch packages probably didn't want to rebuild every single package that was affected. Yeah, exactly. And the way Ubuntu did it, and they named their package because... The way their repository works, their update system works, you have to increment the version by a higher version. If you downgrade it, it will not downgrade. Right, yeah, There's the no... fake downgrade they did, yeah. Yeah, the fake downgrade. So they called it 561, but really, uh, re plus really 545. Mm -hmm. So th that way, that's how they cheated the system, basically their upgrade system, by adding plus really 545. That was funny. That was really funny. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's... But, it doesn't really matter what it's called, right? As long as they are getting away from the affected version. If they're going to do a downgrade, if they're going to do a fake downgrade where the system gets tricked into thinking it's a downgrade, or if you're going to do what Arch did and just go to the source, um, something had to be done. You couldn't keep that on people's systems, that's for sure. Exactly. And Gentoo went back as far as 543. Yeah, that's and they that's locked why it there. Yeah, that's why there's some world issues. <laughs> yeah, so uh, each distro does things their own way, mm -hmm. weird as they might be. But as long as the issue is no longer there, we're safe. But that we're aware of, a, and we I, don't really know. We know still digging into it. Yeah, we we know that the 
SSH issue has been dealt with. We don't know the full extent of what the target was and the full extent of what the back door was running. We know it was messing with SSH keys, but again, yeah, it's still being examined. I think so far that's the only issue that has been found. And not only that, but firmware updater by GNOME was updated to use uh, ZSTD instead of XZ. Mm -hmm. So a lot of packages are now moving away from XZ. Yeah, when I when I did my video on on the situation, I had the number 151 dependencies on Arch. By the time I did my video, it was 145. Yeah, they're slowly moving away. And since Arch uses ZSTD by default, they need to switch everything to. But that brings me to the oh, subject of the poor main developer just lost his project. Mm -hmm. Not the main, not the co-maintainer. The co-maintainer mm -hmm. is the person who injected the code. Mm -hmm. But we're not gonna go into uh, judging here. But the uh, the fact that the main developer who is suffer still suffer recovering from uh, burnout just had this thrusted on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And now he doesn't know what to do, and and he's lose he's slowly losing ground because mm -hmm. more and more packages are shifting to a different dependency. Mm -hmm. So I feel for the for the guy. I feel for the guy. I'm sure. like, yeah. you. He has been relying on this person to to help him maintain the package all all this time, only for to get stabbed in the back. Mm -hmm. So things happen. Things happen. Like. Many weirder things have happened, like in the Ferdy days, oh thanks to your God. video. <laughs> Man, Ferdy was such a ridiculous situation. That dare for anyone, oh, I don't even know the full details anymore. It was so dumb because they like went on it was some so dark psycho too. rant as well, and like they were just randomly spending money on things. Like, I got a donation from them at some point. It was like a $100 donation from them. Like, what are you doing with this money? Uh, but in the end, it, it ended on, on a darker note where he committed suicide. I didn't hear uh, that. Uh, yeah. So, it took a talk turn quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah. Like I said, stranger things have happened. <laughs> So yeah. don't be surprised. It, And I want to tackle a subject now with you that is very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And it should be to you too. Mm -hmm. Stemming from the XZ situation. Right. The fact that people think that automatically by using Linux, you're immune to such things. Mm. This is the the wrong thing to think. Mm -hmm. Like, Mac OS is not immune. Windows definitely is not immune. <laughs> Nor is Linux. I think Linux as an operating uh, as an operating it, system on. is secure. Mm -hmm. Linux as a, as an operating system is secure, but it is only as secure as the things you put on it. Right. So, th do not think do not think that you are safe from viruses. That when they tell you, "Oh, Linux is safe from viruses," no, that ain't true. Just mm -hmm. as we just saw with uh, XZ, if, you, if you're targeted, you're targeted. No matter what operating system you're running, it doesn't matter. If the the, the malicious actor wants to do malicious things to your system, mm -hmm. they will. They will find vulnerabilities here and there, and. Specifically in Linux, it's going to be easier because of the open source nature of it. Mm -hmm. Because they have access to the entire code. They know what to target, where to target, and when to target. So, yeah, this Linux is more secure. Yes, as an operating system, it is. It is it's, as I said, as secure as the things you put on it. If you mm -hmm. don't read the PKG builds of AUR packages and you just willy nilly, install uh, install them just like that because you want the package uh well and suffer problems well there's only one person to blame not the developer because that was their intent from the beginning it's you who didn't read the package build and you didn't take the time to scan the code that's why on my website i included a button that will allow you to inspect my script before you run it 
to have a peace of mind. So, I think a lot of people... That's why the PKG builds exist. I think a lot of people just don't want to take responsibility for anything they do. Like, it, there's this idea like, oh, well, I, I didn't know. I, like... It's the developer's fault for doing it. And yeah, like, developer... If a developer ships something that is malicious, absolutely the developer's wrong for doing that. But at the end of the day, you are the only person out there that is going to be able to keep your system safe. Like, there are people out there who are going to do something malicious. And that's bad. And those people should be dealt with. But... Before they get dealt with, it's your job to make sure you don't deal with them. Exactly. Exactly. So if you don't want to deal with such things, look at what happened with Ubuntu, mm -hmm. for example, and Snap, mm -hmm. and all these malicious crypto, oh, yeah. crypto mining. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Look at that. Ubuntu, the distro that's most commonly used by Linux beginners, without, and they, ha they, they use crypto wallets and what have you. Just, okay, click. Okay, so it's Ubuntu. It's it's got a certain amount of backing from Microsoft. It's it's this big thing. They're not gonna ship me malicious code, so I'm gonna <laughs> blindly trust everything they ship in their in their Snap Store. Guess yeah. what? As as recent times have proved that yeah, even even they aren't safe. Well, the the Snap case was just insane. The fact that they were running an app store with zero human verification. Like, that is wild. How they got away with doing that for so long. And it's not that they got away with doing it. They got called out for doing it back in October last year. And then just kept doing it. Like, they had the exact same situation happen last year. And I do agree when you said that the KDE response was better than Plasma's response when mm. it came to such issues where yeah, they... they took it upon themselves uh, with um... something about it. Mm -mm. Like, uh, Canonical has taken some responsibility for it. Very minor. But they didn't do so until they got called out for it and it took them like a week to do anything. Whereas the Plasma devs, the day the global theme thing happened, there was a post out. Like, David Edmondson was talking about it. Other KDE developers were like, yeah, okay, this is a problem. And they were working on it straight away, like, very clearly working on it. Maybe Canonical was doing things internally that we didn't know about. But nothing was being said, and it took a really long time to get any sort of response about it.